After 47 years of coaching, 42 at Duke, Mike Krzyzewski is calling it a career. Our Leslie Visser first covered Coach K in the late 1970s when he was the coach at Army. In a pleasantly surprising reversal, Mike asked Leslie to be on his podcast to talk about her groundbreaking career. Then they sat down on the day before Duke played Army to talk about how his time at the U.S. Military Academy shaped his entire life. One of the things is about first. Like, do you get tired of all the listening to all the firsts? That no, I mean, I'll repeat this again. I always say, you know, nobody landed on Normandy by himself. So. This past November, on Veterans Day, I was honored to be a guest on Mike Krzyzewski's podcast. After he asked me about some of my groundbreaking opportunities, I sat down to ask him about the life-changing impact of playing and coaching at the United States Military Academy. While most fans are focusing on this year, his final season at Duke, Mike shared with us the emotions about how everything he's become began at West Point. But I never dreamed of going to West Point. I was recruited by Coach Knight in the spring of my senior year of high school. And I, I was a very good player. I was an All-State player and I had scholarship offers. Probably would have gone to Creighton. But you were going to chuck it up, right? You were a shooter. I was a shooter. A scorer. A scorer. A, score, my, my a, a scorer. And, but I could pass too. But when West Point came in, my parents, an eighth grade education for my mom and my dad, a sophomore in high school. And here I have a chance to go where presidents went to school. And I said, well, that's cool, but I want to be a really good player. I said no to Coach Knight first, but it wasn't easy to say it to my parents because for two weeks they browbeat me and finally I said I'll go. And uh, it was, I call it the best decision I never made. That decision, the one that Mike did not make, served as the basis for every decision he's made ever since. The lessons he learned at West Point, where the men and women graduate as leaders, taught him that he's not just a coach, but also a communicator and a commander. In basketball, my really good players, the guys who've improved the most, have had parents or a parent that allows us to coach them, you know, that trusts us as the teacher. Really, I learned that at West Point because they basically, in order to establish a new limit, you have to do something you haven't done before. The one thing that you know, sometimes is lost in our society right now is the ability to allow someone to make a mistake. Because if you're changing limits, you're going to make some mistakes. But at West Point, I learned that failure was not your destination. It's part of the process. To me, that's one of the great lessons that people should learn. <laughs> is And so don't cover up failure and whatever. It, it's there. It's going to happen. However, when you get up, don't always get up alone. Get up and accept someone helping you up. The team can make you better because then you're using the attributes of all the people on the team. And as the leader, I also get better by the people who are on my team. Really, the core values that we have in our program are very similar to the core values of the Army. Do you just go around your whole life yelling, beat Navy? You know what? This is an interesting thing. I would get all the plebs in my company. I said, don't ever say that to me. When you do that, say, beat everybody because if you learn to beat everybody, then you'll beat Navy easier. You give them too much credit. You know, even here at Duke, when we beat Carolina one year and they put bumper stickers and I, I had them, I said, I don't want them. Uh, I like only have bumper stickers if we win a championship and only have a bumper sticker that says Duke. Does West Point come into your mind at some time every single day? Yeah, West Point is the foundation for me. And whether I think of West Point or not, I'm thinking of a lot of value that was introduced or you know, injected in me. But think about West Point too, it is that you're taught that you need to be a lifelong learner. And there are gonna be things that you have to deal with that are not planned. Every day, as a leader, 
I've loved being a leader. Mike Krzyzewski is one of the best leaders in all of sports. I've been fortunate to be around him. It's, I mean, he wins so often. My first thought and wonder is, what's your favorite, right? But I bet he can't answer that question. I, I wrote down a couple of things in that piece. Ability to allow someone to make a mistake, right? And don't cover up a failure. It's the way I've really lived my life. But if I look at him, and I'm truly honest, I think, God, it would have been really amazing to have Coach K coach me in swimming. Wouldn't have been easy. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, this is uh, one of the most well-respected coaches of all time, not just in college basketball, but in sport. And what parent would not want their child to be mentored or coached by someone with the values that he has and that he has set in stone? Mm -hmm. You know, and I'll tell you this, when I was a little girl, I was a Duke fan, which probably there are a million little girls <laughs> my generation who would say that, but I can tell you exactly where I was when Christian Leitner hit that shot against Kentucky, all those teams, Thomas Hill and Grant Hill and Bobby Hurley. I just, it, it was always Coach K though. Mm -hmm. For all those players, because the players would graduate and move on, it was the way he seemed to run his program. It was the, what he seemed to demand of his players that made me such a fan. And the relationships he has with his players. And I right. see it firsthand working with Grant Hill every year at the NCAA tournament. And I feel so fortunate to have those opportunities. And my history with Coach K goes really far back to 1997. And I was a runner for CBS at the Final Four, and I got the chance to pick up Coach K and his wife, Mickey, at the airport. And that was my job. <laughs> Did you hold a sign? Did you write it? I, I don't remember that part, but I remember he just stuck with me from that point on. And when I finally got on the air, I remember my first time doing a Final Four, and they were there. And I went up to Mickey, and she remembered me right Aww. away. And she said, I can't believe this is where you oh, are wow. now. People and so, don't forget you. Yes. <laughs> I know that. It, it speaks to who they are. He is going to right? be really missed in the college world. Just an incredible person and an incredible coach.